Well, hey, what's up, guys? Corey here. Now, whenever school's out, that can only mean one thing. It's time to pack up those bags and round up your friends, because we're heading to the completely safe and happy place that is Camp Stonewater in this review of 1981's The Burning. Hey, wrong summer camp movie, you jackasses. Ah, uh, yes. Summer camps in the 80s. The time of skimpy clothes, no bras, and pancake butts. Yes, that's Jason Alexander, with hair. Before Seinfeld, he played a teenager that was actually 22, but looked 32. The film also stars Leah Ayers, a young Fisher Stevens, Brian Backer, who would later star in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and Holly Hunter. Well, she doesn't really star in it. She was more of an extra, but she's a popular name, so I guess it has to be mentioned. The project was initiated in 1980, but was just shy of beating the original Friday the 13th to the punch, which was already scheduled to be released. This probably stole some of the film's thunder, which is most likely why it was looked past during the beginning of the slasher boom. This film was very loosely based on the real urban legend of Cropsey, who snatched up and murdered kids in upstate New York in the 70s and 80s. At the time of production, problems again surfaced with two other films. One being an underground classic that was also going by the same name of The Burning, but was later changed to Don't Go in the House. And another cult classic slasher, Madman, which had to change its whole storyline around because it was also based on the tale of Cropsey. The 80s sure were an exciting time for the slasher genre. With everybody trying to mark their territory all at once, it was a true battle for originality. The story tells the tale of Cropsey, the creepy old caretaker of Camp Blackfoot, who is severely burned during a prank gone wrong by some of the other campers. When released from the hospital after five years, he does what any other disfigured psychotic maniac would do. He kills a hooker. I mean, somebody's gotta do it. From this point on, the movie starts to focus on the characters for a bit before Cropsey returns to hack some camper ass. We get all different types of campers in this one, like the pervert. Alfred's been prowling around the girls' shower. The jokester. Aim. Park him. Oh! Oh, shit, what the hell was that? The meathead bully. Look out where you're going, punk. That guy who can get you anything. Well, then you won't mind paying a new market price for a bag of rubbish. Five bucks. And a celebrity, too, apparently. Huster, what do you want with Huster Woodstock? You're too small. Hey, size never stopped, Woody. That's the world bantamweight jerk off champ over there, huh? Just stick with me, kid. Keep flexing the muscle, huh? <laughs> Now that we've gotten acquainted with some of the cast, with about an hour-long build-up for the return of Cropsey, which by the way is not that bad compared to some other films, I think it's finally time for some much-needed bloodshed, during the best time to do so in a slasher movie. I'm talking about sexy time. In typical slasher fashion, a lot of the kills take place during the most intimate of times, but in this case, Cropsey's most likely doing them a favor due to their lack of skills. Or for being left with a bad case of blue balls. Cut out. Why'd you come out here then? I'd probably rather die too. Unlike most of the other slasher films of this time, like Friday the 13th, the kills in this film are a lot lengthier and graphic instead of the usual quick cut to another scene style. Tom Savini was in charge of the special effects in this film, and I've got to say it's still some of his most brutal work to date. And on that note, I present you the infamous rap scene. Woody, get ready to grab him. Right, we're going to go on. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. The final stages of the movie is the only part of the film that I'm not a huge fan of because it seems a bit thrown together and half-assed, but it wasn't nearly enough to make this film bad by any means. This is easily one of my all-time favorite slasher films, and it's almost a bit of a shame that this never caught on to make sequels like some of the other franchises. But at the same time, I'm kind of glad this is such a lone wolf of a film that can stand up with some of the heavyweights of horror. Well guys, as always, thanks for checking out this review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and remember... 
right now is out there watching, waiting. So don't look. He'll see you. Don't breathe. He'll hear you. Don't move. You're dead!